Hello, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So today's video, we're gonna go into some of the basics. I have put out a few videos that I feel have been maybe a little advanced and I feel like we should start from the beginning rather than right into it. So let's get into how to solder. tools you will need. Some rosin core solder, soldering paste, better known as flux, some sort of a heat source, some shrink tubing, and most importantly, a soldering iron. A pair of helping hands. And lastly, something to solder. Our first order of business is to strip back a little of the silicone coated wire. These ones are already pre-tinned, so let me get the other side. Go ahead and strip your wire back. That's about a quarter inch. And then I usually twist the ends together so it looks like that. Repeat this process for both wires. Next what I'll do is I will take the flux core or soldering paste and dip my hot iron into it. Then taking a sponge, I will clean the tip of the soldering iron. Just like that. Next, I pre-tin each wire. Apply heat to one side, apply the solder to the other. Sometimes the heat transfer isn't that fast, so sometimes I will touch the tip of the soldering iron, which heats up the solder, and now it will soak in. Same goes for the other wire. Heat the solder, heat the work, or the wire in this case, and apply the solder. Once the wire heats up enough, the solder will soak into the wire. There we have it. Next, grab a piece of shrink tube. This shrink tube is a three to one shrink ratio, and it just makes it easier to get over joints like this. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut this to length. Uh, I will probably usually, I will usually cut it a little bit longer. So if this is a quarter inch, I'll probably make this about a half inch. There, our shrink tube has been cut to length. Now, the first thing to do is to put this over the wire. Make sure to put the heat shrink back far enough so that the heat from the solder joint you're about to make does not shrink the shrink tube too early. So always make certain to put the shrink wrap on your wiring before you join the two ends together. Next, I will join the two ends just lightly touching one another. There are many ways to do this, but this is just the way that works for me. And here, I will just apply heat. And as you can see, the two wires are joining together. That's it. Next, slide your shrink tubing over put the joint in the middle, and then apply heat. And there you have the completed solder joint. And that's how to solder two wires together. In most cases, if you're using a plastic wire, uh, applying high heat, you will melt the plastic. I typically go for a silicone coated wire that is a lot easier to work with. It can handle the higher temperatures of a soldering iron and it is very easy to strip back 
uh, you can do it with a fingernail. If you're using plastic coated wire, you're gonna need a knife or a pair of pliers with the nippers or something. Typically I like to use the three to one shrink tubing as opposed to the two to one, especially for a joint like this. This allows you to get over the wider wire and shrink down to an almost waterproof joint. So a little bit about the solder I'm using. It's a 60-40 blend. This is, a, this is an old reel of solder. It's a 0.032 diameter, which really works out for some of the smaller boards that we typically solder onto in quadcopters. Um, also in this, I used a lighter to do the heat shrink tubing. It works, it kind of singes the tubing a little bit, but it's totally fine. Uh, the best thing usually is a heat gun, um, just the lighter was closer to me at the moment of filming this. So just a quick explanation on what we're actually doing here and how solder reacts to heat. Solder likes to move to the heat. So you apply the heat to one side of the work and you apply the solder to the other end of the work. Once the work and the solder heat up, the solder becomes molten and will flow to the side of the iron, thus making the solder joint. Most people tend to put the soldering iron down, put the wire to the soldering iron, and then proceed to touch the solder to the soldering iron. This doesn't work. You will ball up your solder. If you do happen to get a solder joint, it will be a very weak joint. So if you follow the one simple rule of solder likes to move to the heat, I guarantee your soldering will change from amateur to not quite professional, but you'll end up with some good solder joints. You'll be proud of your work. The other thing that's very important with soldering is to have a good clean tip have good clean work in this case i used aluminum wire uh, a lot of wire is copper you want a good clean joint so if you're utilizing older wire you want to either clean that wire off or cut it back far enough that when you strip the coating you get nice new clean wire with the soldering iron you always want a clean tip if you don't you're not gonna get proper heat transfer. And that usually results in heating up your work too much while trying to just heat it up enough to make the solder joint. Uh, to me, there is two schools of thought when soldering. Some people like a colder soldering iron. Some people like a hotter soldering iron. Me personally, I like a hot soldering iron. I feel that you get in there you heat up the work quickly, you make your solder joint, and then you're done. And to me, that doesn't really apply the excess heat to the work to do any damage. So if you enjoyed this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Just punch that subscribe button, because it's fun. And you only get to do it once. And I'll catch you later. Peace.